Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to be looking at The Design of Everyday Things by Donald A. Norman. Now I recently saw a video about Mr. Norman discussion on, on it was about doors. Norman doors. Now a Norman door is a door that you can operate without any instruction. You look at the door and you can use it. You don't need any sign that says pull or push. You don't need to tell you to flip something or move something. You can tell which side of the door has the hinge and which side of the door opens just by looking at it. But if it doesn't, it's a failure in design. Mr. Norman points out on numerous points in this book, if you have to put instructions on something, you have failed. The design has failed. And this is a book that needs to be handed to every single engineering student, every programmer, all of them on day one freshman class as soon as they declare what career they're gonna have this needs to be handed to them and they need to be told that they need to do a thesis on it before they graduate because they need to absorb this book Mr. Norman makes a very valid point in here it's right in the beginning the businesses exist to serve customers boy would capitalism be a different thing if that were true Except designers exist to serve their bosses, not their users. And they need to serve their users because the user is what matters, not the business owner. Because without the user, there is no business owner. You need to keep the user happy and not the people that are buying the technology. Because a lot of time corporations are buying technology and the people buying it are not using it. The people that use it should be making these decisions. They should be getting feedback to the designer, but there is no feedback. Look at your computer. How many things on it don't work the way you want them to work? How many? You could probably list off a hundred. Is there any way to get that feedback to the people that designed it? Of course there isn't. But there needs to be. Speaking of feedback, the systems that we use, the technologies that we use, should have feedback for the user. If I do A, I get result B. I can see the connection. All the controls I can see should be simple. The controls that I don't need on a regular basis should be hidden, but available and also simple. But you need to keep the interface as simple as possible. I'm actually thinking I'm going to do a video about the technology in my own life. Not technology on the computer, I could do that forever, as I just mentioned, but I will make some comments about it. Because I think we need I need to really look at this because I've seen the world in a different way after having read this book. After seeing through the eyes of Mr. Norman. I've seen how the designers have failed again and again and again. I picked something up recently as an illustration. This is an A Fields and Company progress pruning knife company went out of business in 1942 and no this is not about nostalgia you can have high quality well-designed products in our era just as easily they could in the past but this particular device right here was incredibly well designed and incredibly well manufactured the people that designed it designed it with everything it needs and nothing it doesn't and the people that made it manufactured it with skill and excellence this is at least 74 years old. The spring on it functioned like it was brand new. There is not an unnecessary, unrequired line on this knife. It is one of the most beautiful things I've ever held. It feels good. It fits the hand. It's well designed. It is a work of art. Now I cannot imagine that this was invented this was designed, this was executed and passed on to the user without some feedback. Because this is beautifully designed. And there's nothing in the world as satisfying as that sound. That's an example of good design. And so many things in our lives aren't. Handles on cars, you can't figure out how they open doors you can't figure out how they function phones you can't figure out all their functions on them. the remote controls on our devices that we use for entertainment 
multiple remote controls that we have. I'm lucky at the moment. I'm down to three. I am so fortunate. I got rid of two remote controls recently. It was great. I'm down to a I'm down to a Blu-ray player, a television, and my cable box. What's the cable box remote control? I can't remember the last time I used that for anything. So I'm really down to two. And while I can work them, they have so many extraneous buttons, bunny, buttons that I literally don't have an idea what do. And the buttons on the thing that I do use are often confusing. And often, it's often myster mysterious why they have the buttons and the shapes and the, and the sizes that they do, even though the buttons do not seem to be related to the frequency you'd be using them. Bad design is everywhere. And unfortunately, bad design can kill. Because if you have controls on, say, a nuclear power plant, and there's not the right kind of feedback, there aren't the kind of the right kind of warnings, if things are indistinct and unclear, if the systems do not communicate with each other so that the operator can understand what's going on at all times, you get Three Mile Island, because that's what happened. Three Mile Island wasn't a failure of the operators. Three Mile Island was a failure of the system. And I imagine Fukushima and Chernobyl were very similar in that, design, in that, in that manner. The humans did the best they could. Some of them giving their lives to save others. But the system failed them. And the system fails us every day in much more minor ways. The designs of our lives are horrible. And we shouldn't tolerate it. I talk about the technology I love here. I talk about the technology I don't hear. Because I love technology. I love good design. When something has everything it needs and nothing it doesn't, someone did the job right. When you can use something without any instruction, something's designed right. And when someone tells me that a piece of software or a piece of technology is intuitive, what they mean is that it's similar to something you've used in the past, so you already have this mental framework you can bring to the, to, to, to the party. Problem is, what if you've never used that device before? So don't design something in the hopes that the person that's coming, coming at it already has the model they need in their head. Make the information available in the world so someone who has no model inside their head can still operate the technology. And that is what Mr. Norman discusses elegantly. Now the technology he's discussing is a lot dated. This book is from 1988. But he makes some really nice predictions about technology that is now common. He saw these things coming down the pipe. He just may have not got the dates right. He thought some of these things would, be, would have been done within 10 years, and he was off by about a decade. Yeah, not too bad. He's not a futurist. He's an engineer. So this falls into the category of business and psychology. I think it should be under the category of current affairs and, and general discussion, because this is a book that everybody should read. Originally, it was called um, Psychology of Everyday Things, but they kept putting it into the psychology section, which which is where it does not belong. Of course, it had a nice little acronym poet at that point. Now it says do it, which is really isn't a word. Um, at least not in English, as far as I know. And uh, it didn't believe belong in that. It didn't it didn't need to be in that narrow scope? It needs to be in general reading. And for those wondering, that right there is a teapot you can't use. It's an absurdist design, done by an artist used with his permission. But it's a design of something that doesn't work, that can't work. It's a failure of design. And we encounter too many things in the real world every day that are just as dumb. So, go read this book. Everybody needs to read it. And if you're an engineer or a software designer, read this. Listen to your users, not the people paying your check. The people who pay your check won't have any money if the users aren't happy. Serve the users, and you'll do okay.